I'm pretty outspoken. I, I don't consider myself someone who just talks to talk, but I also don't hold back. Like I'm brutally honest and I don't hold back when I have something to say. Um, so I think I'm pretty good at like putting the filter on and knowing like the timing, but there are just the times where you're, you're feeling so amped up about something that like you just can't help yourself in the moment. It's almost like in those times you like you black out, right? Like you get on stage and you perform and you black out cause the adrenaline and it's just like, I couldn't help myself. I, I couldn't help but say it. Um, so I'm, I try to work on it and sometimes it, that's me being authentic, right? If it just comes through. Sydney, welcome to the show. Thanks for you? having me. What up? I'm no, doing well. How are you? To have you. You know, thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> But how yeah, are you, that's really? Refreshing. Really tired. It's been a weird it's morning. Been, it's been a hard yeah. week, but I'm happy to be here. Yeah. That's how I am. I'm happy yeah. to be here, too. It's it's one of those, that, I don't know if you ever do this with your music, but there are just some days you're just, I don't want to do it. And then you oh, get into yeah. it and you're just like, oh, I'm glad I'm here. That's how That's how the day is gone. And now I'm glad I'm here. So, well, I'm glad you're here too. That'll be a good, good way to, to close out a week. I feel like that's like one of those indicators to let me know that I'm doing the right thing. I would agree. Like, I hate the world. I don't want to. And then I start, and then this conversation started and I was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I can get into this. I'll be honest. Like we're in this space of revisioning, re-envisioning the, the podcast and what it's going to be and how it's going to look. So we're executing every interview a little bit differently and, um, they'll all start the same. And we'll get there, but I'm in one of those spaces where I don't know what's going to happen right now. And normally, <laughs> I have a pretty good sense of things. I don't know what so to do with my maybe hands. this is this is what happens with the more in common future. I, I doubt it. I, I doubt it. But um, so we do always start off with uh, one of the rapid fire questions, since we are all about anchoring humanity and compassionate conversation, navigating the space of tension is one of the things that I think everybody has a hard time with. Um, everybody has a way that they try to do it. Um, and I think more often than not, we all fail. Uh, I can say I fail in many times a day, especially with those who I'm closest to. And your tip is unique, one we haven't received before, and I want to tie them together. So speak from the heart and know when to walk away if it's not going to come out accurately. So you're, you're heightened. One of your other answers was like peace in this country is something you're interested in right now. There's a lot of tension. You live in New York, pretty high energy, a lot of tension. How do you balance and notice that in the moments when you're maybe triggered to speak from your heart or decide to walk away? Because those two things don't always um, agree with your ego at the same time. It, it can be really hard because I'm a very passionate person. I'm either at zero or a hundred. And I think with what has been going on in this country in the last like six years, let's say, um, there just have been a lot of things that I'm so angry about something and I'm so passionate that like, sometimes you just can't help but let it out. Um, I went to a high school where they taught, and it's called the Harkness method. And so every single classroom, including science and math, you sit at this oval table and, um, the entire class is really a discussion. Um, the teacher is there, the teacher guides you, they teach you obviously, but they do kind of take a back seat that I didn't really see in the school that I had gone to previous to that school. And, um, it was just amazing how you can sit there and you learn to play devil's advocate. You learn to see the other side of the argument, but then you can get up and leave the classroom and you're talking to your friend that you were just arguing with about, about sports or the weather or whatever. 
Um, and that is something I try to like, uh, keep with me as I get older, because I think that we just were like, Nope, my idea is right. And I can understand the other side of the, the argument and that's it. And they're wrong and I hate them. Um, so I do think that it, it takes like, you know, you need to go with what's important to you, but also there are times where, okay, let's understand what this person thinks and why, and maybe we can come together and meet in the middle. Hmm. Well, okay. I mean, that's like our thing. That's like our jam. So, uh, that, that I, I guess you answered all the questions then. There was a part you added on your answer. You said, uh, if it's going to get you in trouble, maybe walk away. What does trouble mean to you? I think maybe if you're going to say something that you don't mean, right? So like something happens and you're really angry about it and and we're always told like, oh, sleep on it. You know, you might change your mind or you might feel a different way. I think that sometimes in the heat of the moment and when you're so passionate about something that's like very polarizing, you can say something that you don't mean. Um, and so sometimes it's like, okay, just take a deep breath, walk away and come back. And maybe, maybe you'll still say what you want to say just in a different way. Can we dig on that? This has been coming up a lot. I've been hearing this a lot and I shouldn't say it's been coming up a lot. Um, and, and things I've paid attention to saying something you don't mean. And this is a question to both of you. I'd love to get your take on it. A lot of people now a days argue that if you say it, you mean it somewhere deep down inside, that it is a reflection of some truth or honesty inside of you. What do you think about that? I have thoughts, but I'm going to reserve mine for the moment. I think that you can jumble your words, you know? Um, and I think that sometimes we're very quick to say something, say what we mean. And then we realize that we, we just meant to say it in a different way because we were thinking too fast. So I don't think that it, you know, it's kind of like, uh, drunk words or sober thoughts. I don't think it's, I don't think it's like that. Yeah. I think it's one of those, like sometimes I don't, I don't think it's in, in uh, like a always on or always off thing. I think it can be the case. So I heard somebody just, uh, I don't know, two days ago say like the, the way they decide if they're going to say something is like, if I repeated this 99 times, would I still say the same thing? And I think, um, when I'm pissed, I will say things to sometimes purposefully hurt people. And when I'm not pissed and like, I'm just having regular conversation, I will say things that sometimes hurt people. Like it, it's not, it's not like. Um, and they may or may not be things that I meant to do or meant to say. Um, I think it's possible to say something that is not well vetted by my brain. So I just said it and like, and if I thought about it for 30 minutes later, I'd be like, yeah, no, I, I don't actually believe any of that. I don't, why the hell did I just say that? Like I, I've had that happen many a times I've had it happen in podcast conversations where I go back and like, I don't, why, why, where did that come from? <laughs> um, I don't know. So I think it's possible to say things that I don't mean. I think my goal is to live in a space where I say what I mean a hundred percent of the time. I don't know if it's possible because the way the subconscious works, but, uh, Keith, what about you? Um, I think it's something that came up in the way you said that is, is what does meaning mean, right? Like, what does it mean to say what you mean? Did I mean to say it? That means the words just did, came out of my mouth and I didn't actually intend to say the words that came out of my mouth, or did I actually mean the words that came out of my mouth? And I think the argument that a lot of people I would, I would say the argument that's culturally acceptable is that what you say is something that you in, not intend to say, but mean it. So you might not have meant to say it, but you mean it. And I disagree. Um, I think certainly there can be some underlying Wait, real quick. sentiments. So let's parse that for a second. You say like when somebody says you, you said it, so you mean it. 
as in it's a well-formed thought somewhere in your it's brain. It's a meaningful intent. Like this is how I feel sentiment versus the, these words just came out of my mouth and I really didn't mean to say them. Right. Like so, you know, my wife is a great example of a, a, a vocal thinker, right? If it's in her, if it's in her mind, it's in her mouth. And sometimes she just might not mean to vocalize it. Um, but it just happens. <laughs> and so, you know, but then again, you know, I, we all have thoughts, things pop into our head. And if we're angry, um, and we're, in this myopic viewpoint of the world in the moment, because we're triggered, like, and a thought pops into your head and you say it, that doesn't mean, like, I think you put it very well, Rodney. I didn't vet it. Like, I haven't explored how I feel about it in my body and am I emotional about it. It's just these words just came to my mind and I said them. Um, and that's what I love about Sydney, your, your, a lot of people, it's hard to walk away. And when we're in that moment, we're just, let's walk away, take a breath and let's make sure like, it's, it's almost like it's accepting a storm off. If someone storms off, we should be more accepting of it. Like, good. Like, this is good. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Cause <laughs> take a moment. <laughs> yeah. Go take a moment. Go, it's go storm yeah. off. Go be mad at me for a while. Stew right. Like it. maybe yeah. the words that come out of my mouth, you take it, I mean it one way, but because of the words I used or how I said it, you took it a different way. And it's maybe not what I thought I meant, but it just It's happened. not what I meant. It's what you heard. So now let's, let's bridge that gap and let's spend some time doing it. Yeah. Conversation. I mean, human dynamic is tough. We make a lot of assumptions and we do a lot of mean things to each other. I'll add one more wrinkle because I asked about trouble because like... In the world, in my past, where I always wanted to be right, there were a lot of times where I would say things because I was like, I'm right, and it would get me in trouble. And then as I started to figure that out, it's like, oh, okay, well, like, just because I might be right in this situation doesn't mean that I actually need to share it because it might make that person feel like shit, uh, especially the way I say it. But, like, in general, like, it just may not need to be said at all. And so I, I like how you said, like, if it's going to get you in trouble, like maybe just walk away. Like you can just hold on to that little nugget of truth and just go about your day, dude. Now, how successful have you been at maintaining that now that you're in the real world and not in a controlled set setting of the Harkness method? I would say it's 50, uh, 50. Um, I'm pretty outspoken. I, I don't consider myself someone who just talks to talk. But I also don't hold back. Like, I'm brutally honest and I don't hold back when I have something to say. Um, so I think I'm pretty good at like putting the filter on and knowing like the timing. But there are just the times where you're, you're feeling so amped up about something that like you just can't help yourself in the moment. It's almost like in those times, you like, you black out, right? Like you get on stage and you perform and you black out because the adrenaline and it's just like, I couldn't help myself. I, I couldn't help but say it. Um, so I'm, I try to work on it and sometimes it, that's me being authentic, right? If it just comes through. Well, cause you, I mean, you said speak from the heart and, and you said, if it's going to get you in trouble, maybe walk away. Like maybe it's still the right thing to say. Another one of those things that is commonly said that has interpretations across a spectrum is being brutally honest. What does that mean to you to be brutally honest? I think it just, it means you, you say what you think and sometimes you don't sugarcoat it. Um, so you might not say you look really ugly in that shirt, but you might say, I don't really like that shirt on you. I think the second is being brutally honest. And I think the first is being unnecessary or being mean. Being a dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, because, and I think both of those, some might think the, the, the former is brutally honest. Like to say, you look really ugly in that shirt. Hey, I'm just, I'm just brutally honest. When 
And, and I like the way you say, and I think you nailed it. And this is the thing that I don't think we talk about enough when people say it is I'm, I'm not being like, we take brutally honest, almost as if it's truth, but it's just what's true to me. Like, that's just how I feel. So I'm, I'm expressing, I do not like that shirt. If you ask me, I'm, I'm the same way. If you ask me, I'm just going to tell you, I don't like it because I don't want to lie to you. And I, I get if you makes you feel better, I'll, I'll try to be delicate about it. Um, but that's not my favorite. It's not my favorite shirt. Like, see, but I think the way know. that Sydney, like the second one you said, like, I don't like that shirt on you. I don't like that for you. I don't like that color, whatever, like, or I don't like it, Keith. I think that's a statement of a f- fact. I'm air quoting fact, like for, for your, it's my fact for your, right. yes, it's, air, yeah. it's sharing a fact versus, um, you look ugly in that shirt. That's adding adjectives and, and adding like a negative, like adding a judgment to it that isn't necessary. So then that, that, I think that takes it from just being sharing your truth or being honest or brutally honest, if we want to use that word to being just a dick. Cause like you don't need that. Actually, it doesn't add anything to it. Yeah. And that's not necessarily true, but a lot of people will say, I'm brutally honest and what I say is that's true. So if I say you look ugly in that shirt, that's the truth. You got to know it. It's like, yeah, well, that's your opinion, right? Yeah. No, I'm not here to be a, a yes man, right? Like <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I think and right. it might be good and it, you might not like it. Hey, but you're born and raised in New York. It's it's <laughs> part of the culture that it's in you my grew blood. Up into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you for indulging the conversation. We'll move on from talking about conversation tips, unless there's anything else either of you have to say. I think we nailed it. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I'm curious in this Harkness <laughs> method, but I'm going to look it up later. That's cool. Sounds, yeah. Oh, it's. Sounds I always say, you know, it, it was amazing, first of all, but I think if the whole world te- taught Harkness method, we'd be like a teeny bit more peaceful of a world, you know. You, you also like, you learn to think about everything just in a more in-depth way. Um, and I, I, when I went to college, I found it was just such a like difference in sitting in the classroom because you really do start to think differently, even in conversations with your friends and all that. It's, um, it's amazing. So I recommend you look it up. It's very much, it reminds me a lot of the conversation we had with, um, uh, Joanna when she's an attorney and she's like, like facts are facts. Like we all have facts, but an attorney's job is to convince you of their interpretation of those facts and what the conclusion is and what it means. And, and that's just the case with everybody. Like we argue these things, like we're arguing truth. It's like, well, those are the facts and that's how you interpret them. I get it. Like masks, there are a lot of facts about masks on both ends of the spectrum that you could parse through all day long. And I choose to say, okay, well, I look at these facts and this is the conclusion I draw. You look at these facts and that's the conclusion you draw. Are you wrong? Like, are you a bad person for it? Like we're arguing the wrong thing. And we, to your point about everybody learning the Harkness method, it's like the, it teaches you to have a conversation and not just sit here and debate whose facts are more right than the other. Exactly. Yeah. So mm. I love it. I um, as a transition, you, you brought up peace and Harkness kind of, it, it would, the world would be a more peaceful place. It was an answer you gave earlier. You're it's something you're interested in right now. Yeah, and thinking about what is what does peace mean to you? I think peace is uh it's getting along, peace is being able to not all believe the same, you know, the same thing, um and be okay with that. Uh God, it's so deep. Um <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. we do with the more and more. <laughs> um, yeah, I think just being able to believe in in other 
you know, I might not believe in what you believe in, but we can just, we can come together. It's not something that tears us apart. Um, it's just, it just is what it is. Um, and I think peace is just less fighting. There's so much fighting going on and it's exhausting. So I've been thinking about this for about a week. Um, because of a conversation that we moderated. There are, a, there are, I, I mean, there's a fair amount of people. I'm not going to say it's a gross majority or anything like that, but you know, a million people is a lot of people, even if it's less than 1% of our population. And a lot of people who hate other people, right? I mean, you got hate groups and all that stuff. Like, where is the line for both of you in finding space to accept other people's opinions. But I think it the line is when it comes to people's well-beings. Like we don't why are we killing people who are Jewish or trying to, you know, harm them or people who are Muslim, um people who are any, any person of color, like that's, I think when you're, you're moving past, uh, or I guess you're making your belief, you're taking action. Um, I mean, to me, those types of beliefs are wrong. I'm just going to come out and say it, but, um, a belief is a belief. Um, but that's kind of where the line is for me. Mm. What about you, Rod? Well, I think I take this on like two different axes, like uh, from from just an opinion standpoint, I can accept anybody's opinion because it has nothing to do with me. Um, it's just it's just it's just it is. Um, then from a like what how I feel socially, like what's good for my neighborhood or my my children at school or work or what law should be passed, this, that, and the other. I think it comes down to, I, I would agree with you, Sydney. I think it's about who's harmed. Um, and when we step into harming others, especially intentionally or even not intentionally, like we step into harming others, that's where I would start drawing lines. And then it gets real complex real fast when it's like, well, it's harming this group and this group, but it's harming them less and it's doing more good than bad. And it's like, okay, well, how do we consider that? But I think on the most basic level, those are the two ways I look at it. I, I, I've been thinking a lot about it in the frame of the work that we do, helping people create space for differing points of view. And one of the most common things that I hear, and this is mostly from people on the left, because if you're on the left side of the spectrum versus people on the right side of the spectrum who probably spend more time with a... Just hear me, um, just listen to me, and I don't care about you. Um, but on the left, you hear a lot of that, well, if you have a Trump sign attitude, right, you're a bad person. And, and, and it's like, okay, so dig into that. And that line is so far before violence or infringing on another person. Now, the argument can be made, well, by supporting someone who does want to create rules or laws that infringe upon me, therefore you are harming me, but that person may not see it that way. And then you're missing an opportunity to make that connection. Um, because I too, I, I'm, I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody who has an opinion about anything. And as soon as you say, I think black people should be, um, put in the fields, then we don't, we don't really have them. I don't accept your opinion anymore. I don't accept that, but I, we can, we can really dig into the psychology of the trauma that you've experienced that makes you actually hate that many people. And then we can get on the couch and talk about it. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's interesting to think about in today's society where we are so divided. Yeah. And I think I think sometimes something that is not a fact can we we make it a fact and then your opinion is on something that's a fact using air quotes but it's 
it's really, it's just another opinion, right? So, oh, if someone says, uh, Italian food is bad, like that's your opinion. Um, that's very, a basic example of it. Subjective um, AF. Yeah. So I think that, I mean, that's a huge, I think, thing in this country is we've built this. There are so many things that people believe that I, this is my opinion on this fact when in reality, when it is, is it really a fact, you know, from the start? And, so, and, and we, we generally have, um, I heard an astrophysicist explain this beautifully, so I'll try to re repeat it <laughs> and know this has nothing to do with Schrodinger's cat, Rodney, I promise. Is that when what about people, Heisenberg? <laughs> not Heisenberg's uncertainty either. Who was the astrophysicist? When, uh, so there was a woman on a documentary. I don't oh, okay. know her name. Yeah. Um, uh, Sydney, the joke here. So Keith and I have known each other forever, like way too long. And he likes to use uh, astrophysics and quantum physics to explain like basic <laughs> shit, which, which is like backwards as hell. But it's fun to like try and watch him do it. Uh, I've done it before. And then Rodney tells me he probably, probably got lost on people. And that's my bad. But um so she's like, when we don't know a lot about a thing, we overemphasize our authority on that thing. But when we know a lot about a thing, we have the tendency to feel imposter syndrome as if who am I to know this much about this thing? Doesn't everybody else know this much too? And I think we're in that space of there are, there's so much information out there now and most of us don't know anything about all the things that we talk about. We know like a couple of things and then we're experts. Masks, I'm going to bring it up again, is another good example. There are some, there's some data out there that supports masks not being effective. And then it's like you read this one article that's 25 pages long and all of a sudden you're an expert and you use it and you cite it and you source it. But then you forget to even look at all of the other data that is there because you're just. I don't have you know, time for that, man. I just need the one bias. that supports yeah. what I think, and then I'm going <laughs> to use it to be like the sole source of the truth in my universe. So our opinions become facts based on one or two facts. And exactly. I want to pivot unless you have something anyway. else to add to this, Sydney. Yeah, I think Sydney. Pivot away. So Keith just brought up an interesting point. Like we. Under we overemphasize what we don't know and we underemphasize what we know. So I want to talk about the other thing that you're interested in music. Um, well, something that Keith and I have figured out is that like the thing that we're really, really good at doing, it's taken us the longest time to figure out that we were good at it. And like, that's the thing that we can bring to the world uniquely and potentially help and this, that, and the other. You're really, really good at music. Writing music, especially. Thank you so much. How long did it take you to figure that out? All right. Take a breath. Pause in this amazing conversation with Sydney. And um, we'll come back to you in a little bit with part two. But for now, leave us a like, give us a comment, share us. Just a reminder, let's spread some goodness and some positive energy to other people because we could all use it. And uh, until part two, we'll be back with you.